Hello, we're going to start today's Tour de France question of sports special by going straight into the what happened next round. Astonishingly, and with barely credible bad timing for Adam Yates, it was this. The one kilometre banner collapsing just as he was stealing a march on the main field. The main field was simply held up. Yates was cut up and lost time to them as they lost time to the stage winner, Steve Cummings, who'd made it under the rogue inflatable a few minutes earlier while it was still doing its job. The good news for Yates is that he was eventually credited with his time at three kilometres to go and ended up being awarded the white jersey of best young rider 18 hours late down at the starting po this morning. By then, the race organisers had recovered from the shock well enough to actually issue some correct results, and Yates was up to second overall, five minutes 50 behind Greg Van Avermaet and one second ahead of Julian Alaphilippe. Chris Froome, Nairo Quintana and co are at five minutes 57. Vincenzo Nibali regained a little time yesterday, and Thibaut Pino lost the best part of four minutes. The tour, meanwhile, just lost face, and it's ironic because they've actually beefed up security this year with bag checks Bonjour, and body monsieur. scans. Bonjour at the entry to the TV compound for the first time. But what nobody in the tour organisation apparently tried to make sure of See? was that no member of the public could inadvertently unplug the generator that keeps the one kilometre banner inflated and above the riders rather than deflated and on top of them. They're actually blaming a spectator whose belt apparently caught the cable and yanked it out, which is an explanation so ludicrous that either it's been mistranslated or it's actually true. Either way, the upshot was that by this morning, the raising of the banner had become a tourist attraction in itself. This is it pre-inflation rather than post-deflation, although it looks the same. And this is the new fail-safe procedure. Switch it on and cross the fingers of both hands instead of the usual one. The relieved round of applause from the setup crew might be a daily occurrence, who knows? The barriers around the generator are definitely new, although slightly undermined as a security measure by the fact that the power cable is still trailed across the pavement, ready to be gnawed by a passing dog, caught by an overgrown toenail, or even snagged by someone's belt, assuming they were slithering along the ground like a snake. Right, I think that's enough unreliable infrastructure for one show. The Pyrenees can at least be counted on to stay in one place, and there are four of them on today's route, starting with the biggest, the 2,115-metre Col du Tourmalet. That's followed by the Orca d'Ancizon, the Val Laurent Azé, and the Col de Pegasord, from the top of which there's another downhill run to the finish in Bagnères de Luchon. At the starting pole this morning, Daniel caught up with Adam Yates. Adam, any injuries apart from what we can obviously see on your chin? Not really, I got my wrist, it's pretty banged up, pretty swollen. Uh, on my legs, pretty sore, but I mean, yeah, as I said a second ago, I got off pretty lucky. Um, yeah, I'll be fine. And we talked about the general classification, you're 550 down. How do you see the stage panning out in general? Yeah, it can go two ways, as always. A big race to go up the road. It's going to be a big fight like yesterday, or it'll be a GC day. Um, in my opinion, it's going to be a, a day for the breakaway, another Steve Cummins day. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens.